I want to um, share briefly or teach briefly on uh, a town that I've, it's called Giber. I don't know if I've pronounced it well. A uh, town called Giber and, uh, or a city. Um, I want to call it a city of exposure. So you can write Giber, a city of exposure. Praise the Lord. Uh, now, in the Bible, and just like it is, there are certain names that would appear, or certain um, yeah, names that would appear several in the Bible. And uh, I've realized that even this, the name of this city would appear elsewhere also in the Bible. And uh, I will be bringing it, reflecting on um, David, and also reflecting on our lives briefly. So um, I got to know that Gibeah actually means hill. Praise the Lord. So when we talk of this city of Gibeah, it gives an impression that it was a city that was on some hill. It is, uh, and, and again, uh, that uh, it was a city that had been assigned to the tribe of Benjamin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you read Joshua 18.28, uh, the Bible says, I'm just laying a, a little background. Um, and Zela, that is Joshua 18, 28. And Zela, Elaf, and Jebusi, or Jebus, which is Jerusalem, Gibeath, and Kirjath, 14 cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Benjamin according to their families. Praise the Lord. So we realize that uh, this was a city, one of the old cities that had been given out during the time of distribution and this was given to the tribe of Benjamin. Praise the Lord. Now, later on, we get to see a king called Saul, the first king. Praise the Lord. And he was an inhabitant of this place. Saul Later, the city was called Gibeah of Saul. Praise the Lord. And uh, if you look at the book of again, 1 Samuel, just laying a, a background, 1 Samuel 10, 26, the, the Bible says, And Saul also went home to Gibeah, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Now, uh, that is a story from the time that Saul was put or inaugurated or anointed or put in office as king. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what did Saul do? Saul, after being made king, brought the capital city. He made Gibeah his capital city. He made Gibeah his seat of power. He was ruling from Gibeah. Praise the Lord. So it is an important city. And that is why we want to look at it. Praise the Lord. Actually, in uh, uh, 1 Samuel 11, 4, uh, the Bible says, Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul, it was called Gibeah of Saul, and told the tidings in the ears of the people, and all the people lifted up their voices and wept. It's a story. But what I wanted us to capture is that Gibeah was the place where Saul, after being made the king, brought his seat. It's like the Nairobi, praise the Lord, the seat of power. That is where the king ruled from. But Gibeah has a very interesting history. Uh, if you go to, we will not read that, if you go to the book of Judges, chapter number 19, and uh, through to Judges, chapter number 21, there's um, a, a, very, a not very interesting story about this city. And just to sum up what the story is about, there was a Levite who was moving from Bethlehem to Ephraim and uh, had a concubine, and as they are going through, they wanted, it became dark, uh, late, and they wanted to lodge in Gibeah, and the people didn't receive them. But some old man brought them in, praise the Lord. 
Now, after the old man brought them in, then at night, some evil men from Gibeah came to the house and said, we want to have a carnal knowledge of the man. Praise the Lord. And uh, the man obviously refused, but they raped the wife, and this attracted the wrath of the others. So they came and ran down. They destroyed Gibeah. They killed the people. So there's that, there's that background story also about this city. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want to bring an interface, and because that is what my point is. I said it's a, a city of, what did I say? A city of exposure. And I want to add something else that I would also call it a city of waiting. Tell somebody a city of waiting. Praise the Lord. It is a city of waiting, and we are going to see what I mean by that. Now, if we go to the book of First Samuel chapter number 16, there's that story that we know. The story about David being anointed. The Bible talks of Samuel being sent to Jesse's home, and he goes, and we know the story is a Sunday school, uh, a Sunday school story, and the sons came, Eliab came, and the other ones came, and finally, um, Samuel is asking Jesse, is this all? And he says, no, 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 there's another little one that is in the field with the animal. He says, no, I will not sit until that one comes. And when he comes, then the Lord speaks to Samuel and says, that is the king and is anointed. Praise the Lord. Now, this comes before the time. If you just let me just read the last uh, verse in that, uh, in that chapter. Uh, because after the anointing, then when we go to chapter number 16 and verse number 20, uh, verse number 23, I know I, I wanted to start from uh, a few. Let me just jump some, some verses. I'll read from verse 11 to 13. Then I'll read from verse 17 to 19 and then 23. Verse 11 says, And Samuel said to Jesse, I hear all thy children, and he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance, and godly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose and went to Ramah. Jump to verse 17. And Saul said unto his servants, Now, after the anointing, then we are taken to Gibeah. We are taken to the throne of power. We are taken to the seat from where Saul, who was king then, was ruling from. So in verse 17, the Bible says, And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war and prudent in matters, and comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the ship. And it came to pass that the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed, and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Praise the Lord. Now, we get to the story of David, and David is called by Saul after he's been anointed as king. Praise the Lord. He's been anointed to take over from Saul. But then Saul calls, not knowing that David has been anointed. Now, as David is going, David has the knowledge 
that he has been anointed to be king over Israel. Praise the Lord. But he's called to the palace to do what? To serve this other king. Brethren, it is difficult sometimes when there's a calling in our lives. Praise the Lord. And the Lord wants to prepare us. The Lord wants to give us exposure. The Lord wants to cause us to wait for the appointed time when we are able to take our mandate and to take it to the next level. I am imagining if I was David and I know that I've been anointed and me means also you. You know for sure that the Lord has anointed you. You never applied. There was no application. But the Lord has sent his servant and you have been anointed to be king. And somebody else who is going out is calling you to go and serve him. To do what? To play for him the guitar. Let me you know there's a liar there and harp. But let me bring it to our, our present scenario. That now what you are going to do, having been anointed as king, is to play for another king, to entertain another king. I think it was a trying moment for David. Praise the Lord. And it would be a trying moment for us. But David needed the exposure. David needed the patience for him to be helped to get to that level. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm saying that David was going through a season or a period of waiting. Tell somebody a period of waiting. Praise the Lord. We as children of God are in that period of waiting today. Praise the Lord. After we have been saved, then we start the journey of sanctification. The journey of sanctification is a journey of a period of waiting. And this is the most difficult time in a Christian walk. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because there are so many things that happen in, during this period. There are so many forces that come against you, that will come against you during this time. Praise the Lord. You will be battling from within and battling from without. Praise the Lord. There will be the pride trying to come up. There will be all these issues together trying to come up. But we must realize that before we are glorified, before we get to sit on the throne as king, before we are taken, before the Lord comes and brings us up, there must be a period of waiting for each one of us. Praise the Lord. Now, God in his divine plan, I said I would be here for a short time, had known that David was going to be king. Praise the Lord. And David had been assured and had been told that he's going to be king. So God knew and David knew. Praise the Lord. But yet, God took him to another king. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What was important in him being taken there? What was he going to do in the palace? So just about three thoughts. What was, he that he wa what was it that he was to learn? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David was to learn, one, that the kings were human. Praise the Lord. They were not gods. They were human. And they had their own story. They had their own stuff that they were dealing with. Praise the Lord. But even with what they were going through, the Lord had anointed them for a purpose. There was something that they were to fulfill in God. Praise the Lord. So as he's ascending to the throne, he's getting to know that you are not superhuman to be a king. You are still human. He was going to learn that. Praise the Lord. Number two, David was going to learn the importance of worship. Praise the Lord. What was he going to do? He was going to play the harp. He was going to learn the skill. And the Bible testifies. And we know that David composed the highest number of songs. Let me call them Psalms. The whole book of Psalms. Praise the Lord. He needed to understand what is it that appeased, that would appease the king. 
Probably at that time, he never knew that this was a training for the Lord God Almighty. He was seeing the king who was Saul. And he's there playing his harp, playing his lyre. David is starting to realize that then as you worship, as you lift your praise to God, as you worship your king, then the Lord starts to deal with the issues that are demonic in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we think that it's by our own strength. And we go and you say, you see, I fasted for 40 days like Jesus. And God had no alternative but to make sure that I got this. Praise the Lord. In everything that the Lord enables us or allows us or gives to us, he gives it to us for his own purpose. Praise the Lord. The skill that, you know, we have not been told. David was very young when he was anointed. I'm wondering where he had learned all this skill. Praise the Lord. They talk highly of him. They say he's skillful. They say he's a, a man of war. In fact, if you read, after I got to, the, uh, to the, 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 the seat of power, one of the things that was done, that he became one of the armor bearers for Saul. Praise the Lord. He had immense quality. But he was still to learn the importance. Brethren, David is learning the power in prayer, the power in worship, the power in praise. Because this was going to be important for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David is also learning that there, you must exercise patience before you are put in position of authority. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes when we, when we are young, in faith, and the Lord is helping us. When uh, somebody is preaching, let me give my own example. Sometimes somebody would come with a good message, but you think that this man is playing around with this message. If this was given to me, <laughs> praise the Lord. I don't know if sometimes we get that feeling. This one, if, if, if I was the one preaching this message, it was going to be it was going to just explode. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we must be, we must be in a position of waiting. You wait for your time. You are, you are, you are treated. No wonder the Bible says that before you are put in office, we should not be a novice. You should be a person who has been tested through time. Praise the Lord. So David is learning patience is the key. Brethren, if you don't have patience, it's called what? Subira. Yeah? Am I right on that? Yeah, praise the Lord. If you don't have patience, and the Lord would help us, really, uh, the Lord is still working on me. Uh, I, I must say the Lord is working on me on patience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think I, I'm much better, even on the roads. Uh, you know, Kenyans, sometimes we are very impatient. The light is just about to turn green. And already people behind you are hooting. Pepe, pepe, all over. You know, they want you to go. Praise the Lord. And the way people are walking in the streets, you know, they, they want to run over you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you hear something, you, you don't even want to wait a second time. You want to be a lynch mob. Praise the Lord. The Lord would put us in training in the under somebody who is the king so that we can learn to be patient. You know, David, if we know the story, the whole story of David, many times Saul even tried to kill him. But he didn't jump out of the kitchen. Tell somebody, I'm not jumping out of the kitchen. Praise the Lord. He said, like a cake in the oven, I will wait I will endure this heat until I am fully baked. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are talking about patience. Praise the Lord. Now he was learning something else. I'm about to finish. He was learning through service. Tell somebody learning through service. 
Tell somebody, I am a co-worker. Praise the Lord. You see, in this ministry, we, we call ourselves Christ's co-workers. So it means all of us are co-workers. Praise the Lord. As we are in the church, we are just not seated, but we are learning as we serve. You are serving somebody, and you are learning. You are learning as we serve. Praise the Lord. And in service, sometimes the situation is not very glamorous. It's not very, you know, it's not very appealing. You can be given assignments that you don't want to do. Praise the Lord. Does it happen to you? Praise the Lord. You get this call from pastor at night on Saturday. He's telling you, Sister Penina, tomorrow you are teaching. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you're like, oh my God. I wished pastor told me this earlier. I would have prepared better. Praise the Lord. They say, oh, brother so-and-so, uh, I passed through the, uh, the gens and it doesn't look very clean. I want, I'm requesting you, I'm asking you to go and clean the mess. Is that very nice? Praise the Lord. It is not very nice. It is not very appealing. But what are you doing? You are learning by serving. Praise the Lord. Before you can be served, you will have served. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, many of us, we just want to get to the way they treat apostle does. You know, with somebody lifting the umbrella and, you know, everybody's running around when he comes. We want to come from salvation and get to that. Now, if he tells you his story, how he rose slowly to the level that he was now being served, he had served so many people in between. Praise the Lord. David was learning through serving. And we are learning through serving. We serve the Lord. We, when we come, we are coming as servants of the Lord. We are not coming as bosses to the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are coming as servants of one another. We are serving one another. Praise the Lord. Because that is what the Lord wants of us. Praise the Lord. Now, he was learning in the service an opportunity was being given to him. A preview of what his destiny would be like. Praise the Lord. You see, there are things you may not understand. Let me tell you. I don't know much in Kenya, but I know because we read a lot about America. Praise the Lord. Before another president comes, several months, if you are a serious presidential candidate, several months, they would have started treating you, giving you a sneak preview of what it means to be president. Praise the Lord. So if you are just a man, a, you know, a carefree, who just walks everywhere, who just eats everywhere, they start to control. Slowly, they start to align you. They are telling you, you are no longer just yourself. You belong to us. Praise the Lord. So, the Lord would bring us into his house under a leadership that we can start to learn that which God has for us in store. Praise the Lord. Because if we do not go through the training, when we get, let me localize it and give it to um, our local level, all of us are potential pastors and ministers, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Now, if you've not gone through a minister to see that, for example, a pastor should be a patient person, and you are now the pastor, you'll walk over everybody. I can assure you. Praise the Lord. Because you have not known. Now, David was taken to the palace to start to have a sneak preview, to start to see what it is when he becomes king. How do kings treat people? How do kings help people out? Praise the Lord. So he was given a preview of his destiny. Praise the Lord. Now he was also learning what not to do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you are there, you learn both the good and the bad. So you are saying this one is not how a king should be. But you learn it from the king. Praise the Lord. You see, there are people that can be put around us. And some of them, the only reason they are there is to teach you what not to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Have you been around some of these people who do not know what to say, where to say it? So every time you're with them, you are literally just holding yourself. I hope this brother is not going to start talking. Because the moment he starts talking, <laughs> I'll feel like running away. I don't know about you. <laughs> but I have some. Eh? Most of them are not born again. <laughs> and when you are walking with them, you walk into a place. Their mannerism is so bad. Praise the Lord. Even if it is an eating place. Oh my. You don't know how to behave. Because you don't know what he's going to do next. There he is. You are in a decent hotel. And he's shouting at wait waiters. Because he wants salt. Eh? Where, where? Where, where? Where, where? You know, and everybody is looking at you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just giving that as an example. So, that person is teaching you how not to behave, isn't it? So, part of the things, or one of the things that David was learning was how not to behave. Now, he had seen Paul, he had seen uh, uh, Saul and the kind of a man he was. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A very sometimes disobedient person. A person who doesn't want to repent. Doesn't want to get back to the Lord. And then David realized, no. This is not how to behave. When you find yourself on the wrong side, then you run back to the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he now brings in Psalms 51 that we, we, we know. You know, uh, He says, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Praise the Lord. And renew a right spirit within me. This is after David had fallen in sin. Praise the Lord. He was not like Saul who would be, who wants to cover it up, wants to deal with it. He says, create in me a clean heart. And he says, cast me not away from thy presence. He knew where to take his complaints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He knew the only person who can sort him out is the Lord God Almighty. I must finish. Praise the Lord. So, we receive exposure because God has a great assignment for us. Praise the Lord. Whatever it is that we go through, we go through it that the Lord, when our time comes and he's using us, we are no longer like babes. Paul would call them that they are those who are like babes. They are still drinking spiritual milk when they are supposed to be eating meat and doing what? And chewing bones. Praise the Lord. You see, it's a, it's a tragedy if a child refuses to get out of, he has refused. He says, I only want to take milk. I'm not going to eat meat. He gets to three years, five years. That child will die. Praise the Lord. Now, just three examples of people who are exposed, who are given exposure. There are so many in the Bible, but I just picked on three. Uh, one is Esther. Esther. Esther got exposure from Mordecai. Praise the Lord. And if you read Esther, I may not read it. Esther chapter number 2, from verse 5 to 7, he talks about Esther and Mordecai. Now, the exposure was good to Esther because if it were not for this exposure, probably she wouldn't have known that she can be acceptable to the king. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we have so much self-pity that we think that if we went before our God, our God will reject us. We think that we, do not, we are not good enough to just go and cry out to our God and to be accepted by our God. Praise the Lord. Number two, we have the exposure. Joshua had an exposure from Moses. Praise the Lord. Uh, we can, that is a whole book of Exodus. You'll read, get a lot of it. But just uh, to pick one portion, Exodus 17, verse 8 to 10. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose, at, choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him. 
and fought with Amalek, and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the mountain. Praise the Lord. What exposure do we have? In this exposure, Moses causes Joshua to believe that it doesn't matter what your past is. Even though you are a slave in Egypt, but you can still be a great general. Praise the Lord. So we are not judged on our past. We are judged on the fact that God has come and God has given us the power to move forward. Praise the Lord. So Joshua had confidence. He left and he went and they fought. And we know the story as they were, as Moses was holding up his hands, they were prevailing. Every time that the hands were getting weak and heavy, got coming down, uh, Amalek, uh, was they, 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 they would prevail. And then they came and were holding up his hands. There another someone for another day. And finally, Ruth um, having exposure from who? Naomi. Praise the Lord. Ruth 1, verse 14 to 17. And they lifted up their voice and wept. That is Oprah and uh, Ruth. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Tell somebody, I will cleave unto the Lord. Tell somebody, I will cleave unto the Lord. And she said, Behold, behold, yes, behold, my sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, I will die, and there will be, and there will I be buried. The Lord do to me, do so to me, and more also, if I ought, but death part thee and me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we can see that in Naomi and Ruth, the, the Ruth and Naomi story, we realize that, and I'm imagining, had Ruth also gone like Oprah. Where do we find the genealogy of Jesus, the lineage of Jesus? Does it come from here? Praise the Lord. Does it come from here? Yes, it does. So you can imagine what opportunity Ruth would have missed if she also said, ah, I don't like this exposure. This mother-in-law is very bad. And I don't think I want to have anything to do with her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My husband is gone, so I have an opportunity to run away. Praise the Lord. She said, no, that is not what I'm going to do. So, I'm concluding by saying that the Lord has availed us an opportunity. Each one of us, praise the Lord, that we can be exposed. We, under, we are under the kingship and the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. He is the one that we are looking up to even as we wait upon his coming. Praise the Lord. But during this time, it is a time it can be a time of testing. It can be a time of difficulty. But one thing that we must do is to continue, continue, continue. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So like David, let us run our full course. Let us serve the king so that the Lord would help us. May the Lord bless you, ma'am. You could come back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.